I wish Foxconn could stay as it solves so many employment issues. Goodbye, Foxconn. The videos captured are from the Foxconn factories in Liaoning and Guizhou, China, which once sustained tens of thousands of workers. However, these factories have retreated one after another in just a few years following the outbreak of the pandemic. Another video shows the production equipment located in Wuhan being prepared to be transported away. And at the Shenzhen Guanlan Foxconn, where orders have decreased, the traffic around the factory no longer seems as busy as in the past. Recently, Foxconn, officially recognized as Honghai Precision Industry, has been intensifying its partnerships and financial commitments in nations including India and Vietnam. Originating from Taiwan, this corporation is presently experiencing a notable transition in its manufacturing hubs located throughout different regions of China. In the wake of the COVID-19 outbreak in 2020, a considerable number of tech manufacturers, including giants like Samsung and Google, initiated their withdrawal from China, with Foxconn following suit. Terry Goh, the founder and former chairman and CEO of Foxconn, once asserted that the company has the ability to relocate its production bases at any moment should they perceive threats from mainland China. However, in a contrasting statement on June 28th of this year, as reported by Taiwan's central broadcasting station RTI, Yong Liu, the chairman of Foxconn, remarked during an event at Tianjin, China, that the company had no plans of moving out. Instead, he emphasized on the enterprise's sustainable development within the Chinese mainland. But contrary to Liu's statement, recent developments depict a different narrative, with substantial actions indicating a mass-scale capacity transfer. On September 17th, V. Lee, Foxconn's representative in India, conveyed birthday wishes to Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi through a LinkedIn post. Along with the wishes, Lee hinted at rapid and steady developments of Foxconn in India under Modi's leadership, promising to double the efforts to enhance employment, foreign direct investments, and business scale in the coming year. The post was accompanied by a picture of Liu sharing a cordial moment with PM Modi, symbolizing a strengthened partnership and cooperation between Foxconn and India. Earlier in May, Foxconn had announced the acquisition of a large parcel of land in the outskirts of Bangalore, India, at a value of 37 million US dollars. According to a report by Voice of America, when queried about the company's potential 2 billion US dollar investment plans in India during a financial conference call, Liu hinted that considering the prospective market scale in India, an investment of several billion US dollars would just be the start. As per a Reuters report, Foxconn, the world's largest electronics products contract manufacturer, is actively pursuing investments in southern India, rapidly expanding its business operations in the region. On July 31st, the government of Tamil Nadu, a state in southern India, announced a collaboration agreement with Foxconn. This collaboration involves an investment of approximately 194 million USD for the construction of a new electronic components manufacturing facility, potentially creating 6,000 new jobs. Liu said that presently, Foxconn operates around nine production sites in India, with over 30 factories and an annual business turnover of approximately 10 billion US dollars. Sources reveal that Foxconn, aligning with Apple's strategy, has initiated a move to transfer a capacity worth 300 billion yuan to India, consequently laying off about 320,000 employees in mainland China. This notable transition is apparent from recent on-site visits by netizens and media, where once bustling commercial streets near the factories now stand deserted. Taiwanese media reports suggest that even the Shenzhen factory, often referred to as Terry Go's Golden Goose, has begun downsizing its workforce, indicating a decisive move away from the mainland. What factors are driving Foxconn to retract its market presence in China and foster investments in India? In an interview with the BBC, Karan Chahan, senior analyst at the Indian market research company Counterpoint, said one of the reasons Foxconn is expanding its facilities in India is to increase its market share in the region. Moreover, Chahan highlighted the comparatively low labor costs in India as a crucial consideration for Foxconn. Data from the China National Bureau of Statistics shows that the average annual salary of manufacturing workers in China increased by 50% between 2012 and 2017. As per Chinese media reports, in 2022, the daily wage of an Indian manufacturing worker was around 495 rupees, which is approximately 41.9 yuan or $5.95 US. 
This is 6.8 times less than their counterparts in China, who earn an average of 288 yuan per day. Furthermore, the wage paid to assemble an Apple phone in China is over four times higher than in India. Dr. Zhang Tianliang, a current affairs commentator based in the U.S., noted that China's population crisis is one of the factors causing it to lose its quote world factory status. Statistics from the China National Bureau indicates a decrease of 850,000 people in 2022. Dr. Zhang stated that quote China's population will continue to decrease. The primary attraction for manufacturing in China was the low labor costs, but the decreasing and aging population means that, relatively speaking, labor costs are becoming increasingly expensive. According to reports by Nikkei, India is vigorously attracting semiconductor companies to set up production facilities locally. In December 2021, the Indian government introduced a support policy of investing 7.6 trillion rupees, that is approximately 91 billion U.S. dollars, for semiconductor and LCD production. Recently, the government also decided to expand the scope of subsidies. In recent years, the rapid expansion of India's semiconductor industry has paved the way for Foxconn's smooth transition. Another critical factor is the stringent policies of the Chinese Communist Party, which have made it challenging for factories to deliver orders on time. Following the outbreak of the pandemic by the CCP in 2020, factories in China closed one after another, significantly affecting many businesses' sales plans, forcing Apple to adjust its quarterly sales expectations downward. The strict COVID-19 regulations put in place by the Chinese regime during the pandemic have disrupted production, and the escalating geopolitical tensions between Beijing and the United States are partially driving many companies to leave the country. The Wall Street Journal reported that, according to analysts and individuals involved, Involved in Apple's supply chain, these events have undermined China's position as a stable manufacturing hub, indicating that Apple is no longer willing to place a large portion of its business in one region. It is evident that India's market share is gradually expanding as China's market is nearing saturation. Additionally, there is a widening gap in labor costs, a vital control aspect for enterprises. The instability exposed in CCP's policies post-pandemic has gradually eroded multinational corporations' trust in China. Several underlying issues are driving Foxconn to slowly withdraw from China and relocate to countries like India. One fundamental problem that can be observed from these reasons is that the economic and political environment of the CCP is no longer suitable for the development and survival of the technology manufacturing industry. Foxconn's withdrawal from China is not an isolated incident, as many tech manufacturers have been leaving China in recent years. In October 2022, car manufacturer Stellantis declared bankruptcy for its joint ventures in China. CEO Carlos Tavares pointed out that political interference in the business sector by the Chinese regime is increasing. Kyocera, one of the largest chip component manufacturers globally, has begun transferring production from China to other countries, constructing its first factory in Japan in nearly two decades. As more tech giants exit China, new problems have arisen. According to Taiwanese media, a few years ago, Foxconn, Apple's largest contract manufacturer, paid temporary workers an hourly wage of up to 35 yuan, approximately $4.80 U.S., with additional bonuses. However, recent analyses have several online job advertisements by Nikkei Asian Review show that the highest hourly wage offered this year is only 25 yuan, about $3.43 U.S. Sources revealed that in two significant Chinese tech manufacturing centers, Dongguan and Suzhou, some small electronics manufacturers offer an hourly wage less than 20 yuan, roughly $2.74 U.S. In Dongguan, a manager at a sound systems manufacturing facility indicated that usually around this time each year, they would be engrossed in hiring temporary workers to cope with the busy production season. However, the scenario has shifted this year. According to reports from Taiwanese media, this Amazon supplier doesn't require special recruitment drives currently, with the hourly wage for temporary workers merely at 16 yuan, approximately $2.19 U.S., marking the minimum basic wage in Dongguan this year. Quote, it's unprecedented to not employ any additional workforce during the traditional peak season, but the demand indeed is significantly weak this year. Previously, the vast tech manufacturing sector in China would intensify recruitment efforts in the summer, hiring hundreds of thousands of temporary workers to meet the surge in orders from prominent tech giants like Apple, 
Amazon, HP, and Samsung in anticipation of the end-of-the-year holiday shopping season. Now, the exodus of tech manufacturers has led to a substantial decline in the labor demand in China's tech manufacturing sector. This diminishing demand for labor has caused numerous recruitment agencies in the electronics manufacturing sector to close down one after another. An executive and an Apple supplier informed Nikkei Asia that due to the lower demand, quote, recruiting employees this year has been too easy and the wages aren't expensive at all. Another executive from another Apple supplier noted that in the past, their company would typically allocate an additional 450 million yuan, which is approximately 62 million US dollars, to recruitment agencies to secure enough labor during the summer peak. Quote, but this year, we haven't spent a penny extra on these agencies. Earlier, the annual recruitment and wage hikes were headaches for us, but we don't have those problems this year, stated the executive. Undeniably, the mass departure of large tech firms from China is not just a result of economic issues, but also a manifestation of geopolitical conflicts leading to a massive shift in global production lines. After the issues in the real estate market, it could be said that this represents a historic, unprecedented transition in the tech manufacturing market and another watershed moment for the Chinese economy. According to a report by The Economist, under the dual pressures of business and politics, foreign companies are increasingly gathering the courage to either completely exit China or, at the very least, explore opportunities for growth beyond China. Adding to Beijing's woes, the shift in supply chains has exacerbated China's economic predicament. The youth unemployment rate stands as a stark illustration of this. The youth unemployment rate in China remains alarmingly high, breaking records month by month. Recently, the known youth unemployment rate soared to 21.3%. Subsequently, the Beijing authorities chose to withhold unemployment figures. Fu Ling Hui, the head of the National Bureau of Statistics Comprehensive Statistics Department, explained that, quote, From August this year, the publication of urban survey unemployment rates for nationwide youth and other age groups will be temporarily suspended. The primary reason is that as society and the economy continually evolve and change, statistical efforts need to be continually refined. The labor survey statistics require further enhancement and optimization. Although Beijing has opted to withhold labor survey data, it cannot be denied that to a significant extent it has lost numerous foreign enterprises represented by Foxconn, which once provided vast employment opportunities. This move undoubtedly exacerbates the unemployment rate among Chinese youth. Serving as a barometer for the entire industry, TSMC, the world's largest contract chipmaker, has downgraded its annual revenue forecast from moderate growth to a 10% decline, citing China's slow economic recovery and persistent macroeconomic uncertainties. At the same time, due to the slump in overall demand for smartphones, personal computers, and traditional servers, Foxconn has also lowered its 2023 revenue forecast to a year-on-year -year decline. Chiu Shifeng, a supply chain analyst at the Taiwan Institute of Economic Research, noted that even if there is easier recruitment and lower labor costs in China, these would not slow down the speed of tech supply chain shifts away from the country. Chiu Shifeng emphasized, quote, Despite suppliers also facing the challenges of establishing new ecosystems in Southeast Asia and India, the diversification trend to move away from China to mitigate risks will not slow down.